Amphion factory is located in an old petrol station. Instead of filling tanks, we're trying to fulfill people's souls. In Finland, we have something called every man's right. What it means is that even if 95% of the land is privately owned, you can go and enjoy it as it was your own. You can go pick berries, you can go swimming in the lakes, you can camp there. And this is very much how I see music being. It belongs to all of us and it's, it's for everybody to enjoy. I've kind of spent 20 years of my life trying to come up with something that allows people to enjoy the music as I see it. And this is also why we are very much involved in the whole recording chain. Everybody who works here has some sort of deeper relationship with music and, and therefore you kind of feel you're doing something else than just making a few boxes. We make products for the studios as well as homes. We never believe that there should be different sound on different sides of mastering. What we're trying to do is to open a large clean window to music so you can actually experience your music just like the artist or the producer or the mastering engineer intended. The job of the speaker, the work that it has to do is to truthfully convey the impact the artist intended. If the speaker only has a correct frequency response and it might still skew this experience, it might still not tell the, the message in the right way, it might drop out something what was intended, which is really bad, it might scale it to a different scale, it might make it too small, or even worse, it might uh, color or change what, what was intended. Somebody wants to express something really warm and nice and it comes out as hard and piercing. What I do when I'm working on a speaker, I try to listen for the balance between the kick and the snare. Because the kick and the snare are really the backbone and the skeleton of, of, of rhythm music. And if this balance is off, then the whole rhythm, the whole groove falls apart. As I tend to say, if I was in the market for a speaker today, I would want to have something that works in my current room as well as my next. In order to come up with a product that works in wide range of rooms, we always listen to the direct sound and the sum of reflections. One of the biggest challenges of building a good speaker is that the drivers by definition are very different. They have different moving masses, different dispersion patterns, different surface areas. And we are actually using a waveguide to bring the tweeter more in line with what the woofer does. Not only are we using it to lower the crossover point, this is very important. You actually don't see a, a chair manufacturer putting a seam in the middle of the cushion where everybody can see it. They actually always hide it to the side. And funnily enough, 85% of the world speaker manufacturers put their tweeter crossover in that area where we hear the best between 2000 to 5000 Hertz. And with the help of the waveguide, we're actually lowering the crossover point to 1600 Hertz. When you design the speaker and when you work with the crossover, you're actually separating things. You're taking them apart. You're taking the low energy, the mid energy and the high energy if you have a three-way speakers. And you're separating them electronically so they go to separate drivers. When you're playing the whole speaker system, you're hoping that these will be brought together in a way that corresponds to what they were. In nature, we never have separate sound sources for different frequencies. Always, every sound in, in the nature creates is a, is a point source, meaning it's originating from one point. And this is what happens when we can lower the crossover point low enough, this actually starts happening. Another thing we do with the waveguide is that we actually control the dispersion of the tweeter so that it becomes more uniform throughout the wide frequency range with that of the driver. And therefore we get a product that works in wide range of acoustic spaces. So when I work with a speaker, I spend a lot of time listening to it. If you train your hearing, you can actually use your ears as a very, very sensitive piece of equipment in the development process. It's like driving your car. You look at the GPS, the navigator, but you're keeping your eyes on the road. And, and no doubt, the actual real world is more important. The screen is just a representation. It's a tool, it's a helpful thing. And this is how I approach the development process as well. As I, I listen to the speaker and I check my measurements, I check my measurements to make sure I'm going in the right direction, make sure I'm not taking any wrong turns. But what really counts is that I cannot take my eyes off the road. In this country, we have a concept that a poor man can only afford the best. What it means in our case is that you buy something of quality and you keep it for a long time. We focus on pushing the acoustic design so that we can come up with a product that the customer can use and enjoy for years to come.